Welcome to today's notes over solving one and two step equations. When we solve an equation, our goal is to get the variable all by itself on one side of the equal sign. So x equals whatever x equals over here, or y equals, or m equals, or whatever your variable is. One of the things that I'm going to ask you to do today, or if you ever see two signs in front of a number, such as minus a negative, we're going to combine those signs to make a positive. If you ever see plus a negative, we're gonna combine those signs to make one sign that's a negative. So I like to have one sign in front of each number or term. So when we're solving one step equations, it will you will use one step in order to get the variable all by itself on one side of the equal sign. So what we're gonna use are inverse operations. Let me make sure I can write that correctly. Inverse operations. We're going to use inverse operations, and you've probably seen this before, the inverse operation of addition is subtraction and vice versa. The inverse operation of multiplication is division and vice versa. So on number one, and if you really struggle with solving equations, I say draw a line down your equal sign. That's where your equal sign stays. It stays on that line. So let's move everything across that line except for this x. So I have x plus 15. How am I going to undo this plus 15? I'm going to subtract 15. What I do to one side, I need to do to the other to make my equation balanced. Okay, I'm sure you've heard that before. We want to balance our equation. So Positive and negative 15 cancel each other out, and I'm left with x equals, and then I'm going to combine using my integer rules, which you've probably already gone over, negative 3 and negative 15, same signs, add and keep. So that's negative, and we add them to get negative 18. How can I check my work? If I plug in negative 18 for x, negative 18 plus 15, different signs subtract, I'll get negative three. So you always want to check your work. Okay, number two. Here's one of those examples where I have two signs in front of the 16. I have plus a negative. So I'm going to combine those to make a negative. Now that really helps students determine what your inverse operation is. If my goal is to get y all by itself, how am I going to undo minus 16? I'm going to add 16. And what do I get? I get y equals 25. And if I check my work, it will be correct. Okay, number three. Negative 3 times m equals negative 9. How do I undo times negative 3? The inverse operation is division. So I'm going to divide by negative 3. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1, and 1 times m is just m. So those cancel out. So, you know, if you ever see it, like the same thing in the numerator as you do in the denominator, and everything on top is multiplication like that, you can just cross those out. Okay, so negative 9 divided by negative 3, what is that? It's positive 3. So if you don't know your integer rules or you really struggle with those, you're going to want to make sure that you know how to plug it into the calculator correctly. That's a negative 9 divided by a negative 3, not the minus sign. Number 4, x divided by 5 equals 7. So how do I undo that divided by 5? I'm going to multiply by 5. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Those cancel, and I'm left with x equals 35. And if we check our work, 35 divided by 5, what is that? It's 7. Awesome. Okay, let's move on. So now, what do you notice about 5 and 6 that we haven't done before? We're dealing with fractions. When you have a fraction times a number, we're going to be multiplying by the reciprocal. So let's first talk about why we do this. So this is multiplication. That's one third times x. Okay, well how do I undo multiplication? I divide. What would I divide by? One third. Okay, 
I would divide by one third over here. So how do you divide by a fraction? Do you remember what you do? Do you remember that rule? If I have negative 1.5, which I'm gonna write that as a fraction, negative three over two divided by one third, do you remember the rule? Keep change flip, copy change flip, you keep this negative three over two, you change this to multiplication and you flip this. When I flip a fraction, that's the reciprocal. Okay, so the reciprocal of one third is flip it three over one. So what am I doing when I'm dividing by a fraction? I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. That's our rule here. Okay, to get rid of this fraction, instead of dividing by one third, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal because it's the same thing. What's the reciprocal of one over three? It's three over one, which is just three. So now if I take this side and I multiply it by three, I get x equals negative 4.5. Let's go on to number six. Negative three fourths times x equals nine. Okay, I've got a fraction times a variable. I wanna get the variable all by itself. What do I do? I multiply by the reciprocal, flip it. That's negative four over three. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And you get x equals, and then if I'm multiplying fractions, that's gonna be nine. Anything is, any number is itself over one times negative four over three. So when I multiply fractions, a positive times a negative is a negative. And then I've got this nine and three, I call it cross simplification. I can simplify this nine and this three by dividing by three. Three divided by three, that's one. Nine divided by three, that's three. And now I've like pre-simplified and I don't have to simplify at the end. And remember when we multiply fractions, we just multiply across. So I get negative 12 over one, which is just negative 12. Okay, we are rocking and rolling. Those are one-step equations. Let's now go to two-step equations. So in a two-step equation, I want you to think about when you're your goal stays the same. It's still get the variable all by itself on one side of the equal sign. So I got to move everything else to the other side. How do I do that? There's a process. Okay. I'm going to do reverse PEMDAS. I'm going to do go in the reverse order. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to undo using inverse operations, addition and subtraction. So I'm going to undo this first. Then second, I'm going to undo multiplication and division. So that's this next. I'm going to go in reverse order. So let's look at number seven. Okay, my goal is still to get the variable all by itself. So that's two times x plus nine equals negative seven. I'm going to undo this plus nine first by subtracting nine. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Negative seven minus nine, same signs, add and keep. Negative 16, again, you can always plug that into your calculator. Now I'm undoing, this looks like a one-step equation, right? So we did our first step and now we have one more step. That's why we call it a two-step equation. So I'm gonna divide by two on both sides and I get x equals negative eight. Keep in mind your integer rules. Number eight. If you don't like this line that I'm drawing down your equal sign, you absolutely don't have to do it. I just know that when I've taught upper level math, I really like the equal sign to be all lined up. It's just nice and neat and it's easy to read. It's just, you can keep up with your work and teachers love it. So I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna get this variable all by itself on number eight. I'm gonna undo the subtraction. How do I do that? I add 10. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. I'm left with negative x over two equals one plus 10 is 11. Now my goal is to get x all by itself, not negative x. So how am I gonna undo this division? What am I gonna multiply by? Two or negative two? Negative two, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other, and I'm left with x equals negative 22. Let's move on to number nine. Oh look. 
Which side is the variable on, left or right? It's on the right, but that's okay. If you don't see anything in front of that variable, what can you put there? You can always put a one, okay? I can always make that negative, let me make that a little prettier, negative one n. Okay, so I have this four here. It's a plus four because there's nothing in front of it, so it's assumed positive. How do I undo plus four? I minus four. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other, and I get eight equals negative one n. This is a two-step equation because what do you need to remember to do next? Divide by negative one. I don't want what negative n equals, I want what n equals. That gets rid of that, and I'm left with n equals negative eight. And if you like, if you're one of those that likes to turn it around and write your answers like this, that's totally fine. It doesn't matter. Okay, number 10. So I'm gonna draw my line down my equal sign. What am I gonna do first to get this variable all by itself? I'm gonna undo that minus five or negative five. When we have one sign in front of the number, it's just, it's like the operation and or the sign. That's how you can think of it. So how do I undo that minus five? I add five. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Remembering my integer rules and different signs subtract, take the sign of the larger number, then you'll be exact. So negative two and positive five, make positive three. How do I undo this divided by three? I multiply by three and I get x equals nine. Okay, moving on to number 11. Let's see, I'm gonna draw a line down my equal sign. What am I gonna undo first? Minus six, one third x equals, same signs add and keep, negative nine. Again, if you're plugging it into your calculator, you would plug it in negative three minus six. Those are the signs that you would plug in, okay? So now here's one of those examples where I've got a fraction in front of my number. Do you remember what we do with fractions? What do we do to undo fractions? We multiply by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of one third? Flip it, three over one. Well, that's just three, right? So can I just say I'm multiplying by three on both sides? And I get x equals negative 27. Okay, number 12. Oh my goodness, two-step equation. I've got a fraction on the variables on the right. Let's do it. So how do I, what do I undo first and how do I undo it? I'm gonna undo this 15. How do I move it to the other side? I subtract it. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. What is 12 minus 15? Negative three, different signs subtract. Okay, so now I've got a fraction here and I wanna undo it. So I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal, negative four over three, negative four over three. That cancels those out and I'm left with X equals, okay, well, let's do this without a calculator. Negative four over three, times negative three over one. Well, a negative times a negative is a positive, so I know my answer is positive. And then I can multiply across to get 12 over three and then simplify it to get four. Or I can see that I have the same thing, this three and this three. I do what I call that uh, cross simplification or pre-simplification. There's not really a specific term for it, it's just what I call it. So I can divide by the common factor, which is three. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and now I've already simplified it. I don't have to simplify it again. So x equals 4. So there are some cases that you need to be aware of. They look slightly different, obviously. These special cases, what do you notice that's different? In every single one of these, on problems 13 through 16, I'm dividing by a number and my variable is on top in my numerator. So there are assumed parentheses in your numerator, okay? In all of these, there's assumed parentheses. So if I'm following my order of operations, if I'm going in reverse order, I can't undo that until the very end, which means in these cases, I need to get rid of what's in my denominator first. So the first thing I have to do is undo the division. Our goal stays the same, get the variable all by itself. How do I undo that divided by five? 
I multiply by 5. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other to keep my equation balanced. And I get x plus 7 equals negative 15. Okay, moving right along. Now I've just got a basic one-step equation that I'm left with. How do I undo that plus 7? I'm going to subtract 7. And same signs add and keep, I get negative 22 for x. So again, if you're going to use your calculator, that's negative 15 minus 7. That's how you would plug that in. You could also plug in negative 15 plus negative 7, whichever you're more comfortable with. I have students that like to do both and just whatever you're more comfortable with. Okay, number 14, same thing. I've got to get rid of what's in that denominator first because my, new, my variable is in the numerator. So what do I do? Multiply by 2. Got to do that first. I'm left with y minus 3 equals 8. And now what do I do? Add 3. I'm left with a basic old one-step equation, and I get y equals 11. Okay, number 15. Again, if you don't like that line down the equal sign, don't worry about it. What do I do first? Multiply by negative 3. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And I get m. Let's go ahead and simplify this. This plus a negative. What do I want you to write down? Minus 2. Just one sign. Just It makes it really, really easy. So negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Now, there's no question. What's the inverse operation of subtraction? It's addition. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And I get m equals 8. And again, you can always go back, plug in 8 for m. On the left side of the equation, do you get negative 2? Yes, you do. We're good. Last one. Okay. Variables on the right side. We're going to move everything else to the other side. What do I need to get rid of first? This 4. So let's multiply both sides by 4. 5 plus a equals, what is that? Negative 28. Now how do I do the, undo this 5? It's plus 5. Okay, so how do I undo plus 5? I'm going to subtract 5. And I get a equals, same signs add and keep. We're going to add them and keep the sign. A equals negative 33. And that concludes your notes over solving one and two step equations. I hope it was helpful.